Introducing the Nexus 360, Diderio's first rechargeable omnidirectional tuner. Visible at every turn, from any angle, no matter where you wind up. Nexus 360, built for your next stage. Maybe a bigger congrats, considering our audience and what we're here to do. This guitar you built during quarantine, a yep. quarantine project. Yep, this was my lockdown project. Came back from the studio after recording. I had this bit of mahogany and it was under the bed for like five years and I'm like, I'm going to make a guitar one day. One day I'm so going to do it. So you knew this was coming? I knew it was coming. You're I knew stuck it was coming. on wood. I know, but never had, never had the time to do it. And I was kind of sitting the last day in the studio just going, what am I going to do? Because I'm rubbish at kind of sitting, doing yeah. nothing. So I went, okay, I'm going to buy some tools, I'm going to go home. I'm just going to make like the body. Go do the body, buy some parts, buy a neck, you know. Do a little semi-parts caster thing. Um, and ended up making the body fairly quickly and then going, you know, I'll buy some other wood, buy a bit of maple, flamed bit of, this is actually a flamed bit of torrified maple. And this is just a very, very dark piece of rosewood and went, you know, why not? Let's give it a go. And just it kind of snowballed. Yeah. How yeah. long do you think the project took you? About 10 months. Wow. About 10 months. Yeah. I'm sure there's some start and stops and breaks and no, frustrations. Of course. And, you know, a lot of it was done with, you know, pretty cheap tools. Um, just like even radiusing the fretboard took, I want to say like about five hours. Wow. A tiny little block, just made a little jig on the balcony, just kind of going away, measuring, going away, measuring, you know. And in, you know, in lockdown, I kind of needed, you know, we all needed that kind of escape, yeah. didn't we? So this was that and just kind of taking real care over each, each small bit and part of the process. Now you went, kind of glossed over everything as the, as the project, but Let's dive in a little deeper, because mm -hmm. some of these, obviously, it's a, a, J a Jaguar-based guitar. Yep. But what are some of the things that you've done to it? I can tell, I'm sure the camera's picking it up. A little extra carving, all that. So talk to us about how this guitar unfolded to be kind of your number one now. Yeah, so... And what you put into it to make it that. So this was kind of trying to remedy some of the issues that I had with the Jaguar. And I love Jaguars, you know, they're my main guitar. It's okay. what I've played forever and ever. I've played that one for the last 10 years, you know. Um, but this was, yeah, a shot of kind of remedying some of the things and kind of making something that was a bit bespoke for myself. So all the kind of contouring was done to my own body. I kind of got the block of wood and went and kind of, here is my rib profile and here's my yeah. hip. Here is where my arm naturally sits on the guitar. So we carved that out. It's a longer scale length. So a Jaguar is 24 inches, I believe. Yep. Um, and this is 24 and 3 quarters, so like which I believe is a Gibson, yep. which makes kind of playing down here a little bit easier, which is nice. It's a Jazzmaster body, which is just a tiny little bit bigger. Okay. Um, yeah, and then just stuff like the neck profile is absolutely it's very, tiny. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's absolutely tiny. I mean, even, you know, Fender guitars that, you know, say they're slim necks, you know, they're not. They're not, you know, they That's they're not that thin. slim. That's RG series thin. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like, I wanted a kind of Ibanez kind of shredder neck. Mm. So um, it's along those lines. It's kind of pretty thin up here. Now, three quarters um, of an inch isn't that big of a difference, you know, oh, in the it, scheme of things. But what, what does it do for you that you oh, find pleasing? Completely opens up this bit of the fretboard, especially doing chords down here. Because there's one song we got on the new record called Delicious Things, where I'm doing a lot of chord stuff down there. And on that, I just can't play it. My mm. fingers are too big, and just trying to do any of that kind of stuff down just doesn't work at all. But with this, opens up. Yeah, but without having it that full scale length, which then kind of I'm going, ah, I don't know where I am. Yeah. Because I've always played the shorter ones, so yeah. And there's certain, because I've got quite big hands as well, I'm used to kind of doing shapes that I can't do, yeah, on a, on a strat or a, Jazz master or something like that. Now, did that change or impact what strings you were using? The, the extra scale length compared um, to the other, this older, you know, the Jag, the 62 reissue? We've gone for, we're on heavy bottoms. So we're kind of heavy bottoms. It's a kind of a hybrid. I can't remember what they are. There we go. Thank you, sir. So these are Ernie Balls. There you go, product so placement. Got, exactly. Thank you, Ernie Ball. We <laughs> love you. Um, skinny top, heavy bottom. So okay. they're kind of a hybrid. Um, because I'm a little bit reticent to put really heavy strings on here because of how slim the neck is. Yeah. Yeah. The tension. Yeah, no, exactly. So 
Thank you, Annie Bull. <laughs> <laughs> now, pickups. I you, assume Adam. you didn't wind them, but. So no, 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 no. Okay. All the hardware, you know. Okay. All the hard, you know. Let this the is. Pros do that. This is stock. You know, this is stock Fender. This is mastery. Mm -hmm. These are Lollas. This was actually this is just a kill switch because I took out the rhythm circuit because yeah. I never used it, but I used it as a um, as a kill switch. So I've actually stole this off the Troy Van Leeuwen oh. guitar because yeah, I, I had a tiny one in there for a little bit and it would just break. So this is, I mean, it's incredible. And that guitar is incredible. Yeah. I have one at home without one of these in. <laughs> yeah, now you definitely do. I know, yeah, yeah. So I need to find, I need to find a, you know, I need to find this and put it, put it in that one properly. And, then, um, and what, uh, just standard kind of procedure down here with that, those sliders? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So this is... Wiring and stuff? That's that one, that's that one. This is a high pass. Okay. Yeah. And do you ever use that or is that just kind of... There? Oh, all the time. Oh. Oh yeah, God yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. And what kind of application? Um, it depends on the sound. I mean, you know, essentially it just thins it out, so it kind of it creates somewhat of a middle space between these two. But if jags you know can I mean. be kind of thin, anyways. Like fenders are known to be like thin, trebly instruments. Yeah, especially these. But it's boys. all it's all compensated, I think, between what you're doing on the floor with the pedals and the ramps. Sure. You know, it's a multivariate. Because I mean, you can see on that one. I mean, to compensate, you know, that twin has got its base set on ten. Yeah, yeah, that does it. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So it's little little things like that which can kind of make which can make it sound a bit more guitar-y.